Hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's time to my presentation, so that I would like to um, start my presentation. Uh, today, I will um, talk about Kubernetes. The title is Kubernetes Failure by Improvement, Non Graceful No Shutdown. Uh, can you hear me? How, how do you go? Okay. How can I fix it? Is it no problem? Okay, uh, let's start. Uh, here is my uh, today's agenda. At first, I will talk about Kubernetes failover issue, and I will explain that uh, what happened uh, when we use Kubernetes in production. And also, I will talk about the solution. The name of the fe feature as the solution is non graceful not shut down. And then uh, I will talk about how to use in production environment. And finally, uh, I will talk about conclusion. At first, I would like to introduce myself. My, my name is Yuiko Mori. I'm a software engineer. I'm uh, working for NEC open source community team. I joined in Kubernetes community in 2019 and mainly contributing for SIG storage and the SIG testing. And also, uh, I talk about our um, something like mission. Uh, our company is uh, providing Kubernetes and the product OpenShift, which is based on Kubernetes, to our customers. In this work, uh, sometimes we find Kubernetes um, bug or uh, uh, we notice that we mm, we need to add some features so that uh, we fix Kubernetes bug and uh, add some features uh, which our customers need in Kubernetes community. Then uh, I will talk about Kubernetes. Well, what is Kubernetes? Uh, maybe uh, um, the people in this room know about Kubernetes so as well, so that um, maybe I I don't need to uh, explain so clearly. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I just copy and pasted this diagram from Kubernetes.io. <laughs> Kubernetes an open source system for automating deployment, scaling, and management of containerized applications, as you know. And Kubernetes has many features, and uh, one of the most attractive feature is self-healing. Uh, self-healing restarts containers that fail, uh, replaces and uh, reschedule containers when nodes die, and kill containers that don't respond to your user-defined health check and doesn't advertise them. I lost my mouse. Uh, doesn't advertise them to clients until they are ready to serve. Then uh, I'd like to introduce some terms in Kubernetes also. At first, pod. Pod is a, a group of one or more application containers and some shared resources for those containers. And the stateful set is an object which used to manage stateful application like a uh, data store. A stateful set manages pods that are based on an identical container spec. About a unique point of stateful set, a stateful set um, maintains a sticky identity for each of its pods. These pods are created from the same spec, but are not interchangeable. Each has a persistent identifier uh, 
and uh, that it maintains across any rescheduling. Then, uh, Node is a worker machine in Kubernetes and maybe either a virtual or uh, physical machine, uh, depending on the cluster. And then, Taint. Taint is a property of pods. The pods to schedule no onto nodes with matching taints. And finally, a persistent volume. Persistent volume is piece of storage in the cluster. Next, uh, I'd like to talk about Kubernetes failover issue. Pod with persistent volume fails to migrate when the Kubernetes node is done. There is a pod uh, named pod1 on the node, node1, which is attached to persistent volume pv1. And also pod1 is a uh, part of a stateful set, uh, stateful set 1. When node1 is down due to hardware failure, we, ex uh, we expect two things. Uh, one is that pod 1 or node 1 will be created on node 2 newly. And another is that a PV1 will be detached from node 1 and attached to node 2. But, but actually, pod 1 on node 1 is not created on pod uh, node 2 newly and the pod 1 stuck in terminating status indefinitely, as you can see here. And also, PV1 is not detached from node 1. Uh, that's not what we expect, right? The reason why this issue happened is node 1 does not respond uh, due to the uh, node failure, so that uh, pod 1 stuck in terminating status. And also, PV1 cannot be detached from node 1. Uh, there is uh, one thing to note. This issue may not be visible to users on managed Kubernetes clusters like uh, AWS or Azure or something like that. For example, in case of AWS, the monitoring system uh, deletes the failure node when it detects a node failure and creates a new node. When the failed node is deleted from Kubernetes, PV uh, on such node will be detached. So a new port will be created on another node. Next, uh, I would like to talk about the solution for this issue. The name of feature is non-restful node shutdown. Non-restful node shutdown feature allows stateful workloads to restart on a different node if the original node is shut down unexpectedly or ends up in a non-recoverable state such as the hardware failure or unresponsive OS. This feature has been released as alpha in version 1.24 and now uh, it's uh, stable which has been released in version 1.28. I will introduce the steps on non of non graceful node shutdown. When the administrator, user, on or the monitoring system uh, confirm uh, node 1 is powered off or isolated from the cluster, it adds out of service taint to node 1. The values you set for that taint can be node.kubernetes.io slash out of service equal no shutdown colon a no execute or node dot kubernetes dot io slash out of service equal no shutdown colon no schedule. 
them, the Kubernetes controller holds the old pods remaining on node one with uh, out of service taint. Thereby, uh, pods on the shutdown node is created on node two newly, and the PV1 is detached from node one and attached to node two. Uh, even after node one is back, the controller will not schedule new pods on it while the taint exists. So that uh, administrator user need to delete taint uh, manually. Uh, from now, uh, I wanted to show you a demo, but I couldn't take enough time to prepare so that uh, I'd like to show you uh, actual screenshot like demo. So let's go on. Uh, there are three nodes. Uh, one is control, control plane. And the other two nodes are test worker and test worker two. Uh, though these two nodes are worker node. And I created this node by uh, using kind. So these nodes are uh, Docker containers. And also uh, there is one pod in state of set. And also uh, there is one pod in state for set. Uh, this is sample application and you can get with this, this URL. Uh, this sample application outputs current timestamp like this uh, every second. Uh, this part is running on test worker two. Then uh, I stop the node test worker two. Uh, as I mentioned, these uh, nodes are created by kind so that I do docker stop and this node will stop. Uh, so that it means node shutdown. Uh, eventually the node status become not ready. And as you can see in default about uh, 300 seconds later, pod status become terminating. The reason is in Kubernetes, uh, when node become unreachable in default 300 seconds later, Kubernetes try to evict and the pod from evict the pod from unreachable node. From now, I will show you a non-graceful node shutdown feature. I add a auto service taint to the node uh, test node, test worker to node. And then pod is uh, created on the test worker. It's uh, other, other node from te test worker too, right? So that this part has been moved to test worker from test worker too. And then uh, let's check the sample application. This sample application write current timestamp every second. But as you can see, uh, he here and here, uh, this line is five o'clock, uh, 15 minutes. And uh, this line is five o'clock, 21. So you can see that uh, for about six minutes, there is no output. So in this period, uh, node was stopping. I will talk about the role of non grasp no shutdown feature also. The role of Kubernetes is deleting parts forcefully from the node to which out of service taint is added. On the other hand, 
uh, adding the taint must be done by administrator user or something out of Kubernetes. If human do this operation manually, it's a little bit hard if there are hundred or more nodes. Therefore, I will talk about how to use a Nongress for no shutdown feature in production environment. I showed this table a few seconds ago, and I said that uh, adding the taint must be done by administrator user or something out of Kubernetes. I will introduce this something out of Kubernetes uh, from now. The name is node health check operator and self node remediation operator. These operators are developed in Medicaid's open source project. Node health check operator uh, monitors the node's conditions uh, using a set of criteria, for example, uh, power off or connection timeout, and uh, detects unhealthy nodes. Another operator, the name is self node remediation operator, uh, which remediates the unhealthy node. This operator reboots the node using watchdog or some other mechanism like uh, BMC. And also I will talk about the steps of node health check operator and uh, self node remediation operator and non for node shutdown. Uh, before using node health check operator, you can define uh, unhealthy status in YAML file. For example, uh, when the control plane uh, does not get a heartbeat for default of more than 40 seconds. Then, uh, when node health check operator detects node 1 is unhealthy according this YAML file, uh, self node remediation operator adds a uh, out of service taint to node 1. Uh, basically, the following steps are almost the same as what I explained a few minutes ago. The different point is that the faded node is rebooted by watchdog or some uh, other mechanism like BMC. If the failed node is rebooted for and uh, there is no terminating pods or some other objects, self node remediation operator deletes the outer service taint. Then uh, I will show you a demo of node health check operator and self node remediation operator and non for node shutdown. It's first time my for it's my first time to show demo to you. It's uh, I'm a little bit nervous. Okay, it's playing. Uh, stop, 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 stop. Uh, uh, as you can see, there are three nodes, okay? Control playing and two worker nodes, uh, Kubernetes 2 and the Kubernetes 3 uh, worker nodes. We start. Then I create a namespace named test, and also I created the state for pod, and uh, there are three in the there are uh, state for set state for pods, maybe seven or eight, I think. They are running on many nodes, Kubernetes 1, 2, 3, they are running, okay. Then uh, I will stop 
uh, one node. Okay, as you can see, uh, I'll stop uh, uh, Kubernetes 3 node. Okay, I powered off this node so that it means a uh, node shutdown, right? And restart. Then uh, it will take five minutes to the status of pod change so that I move forward. Uh, about five minutes later. Okay, okay, okay. okay uh, as you can see, uh, here is out of service taint. You can see on Kubernetes 3 node, this taint has been uh, added to this node automatically by uh, self-node remediation operator. And I will start again. Oh, oh. ここからはすごく早いので気をつけて見ていただきたくて、えっと、okay, as you can see, uh, this pod was container <laughs> creating, so uh, all pods are running. No, is not a problem, but uh, all the pods are running on Kubernetes one or two nodes, no Kubernetes three nodes, right? So that uh, these pods are evicted to other nodes uh, by non restful node sh uh, shutdown feature. Okay. My demo is finished. Okay. Then uh, I'd like to con uh, talk about this conclusion. Uh, state of our workload uh, stuck in a terminating status when now they shut down or in a non-recoverable state, a non graceful node shutdown feature allows state for workloads to fail over to a different node after in such situation. And the node health check operator and self node remediation operator makes uh, using non graceful node shutdown in production production environment easier. This is all for my presentation. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Any question? for your presentation. Um, can you please once more explain why the node ends up in the terminating state and why it stays there? Because I didn't understand quite why that happens. Or sorry, why the, why the pod stayed in the, the, st in the terminating status? Uh, pod status is stuck in terminating, yes. right? What, what what causes it to stay there? Yeah, uh, um, Kubernetes controller request to uh, terminate a pod, and, uh, uh, but uh, it wait, the controller waits a response from uh, Kubernetes, uh, which works on uh, 
Kubernetes node. So there is no mechanism, that, uh, fallback mechanism right now. So that, that's the reason the uh, port, uh, port uh, terminating status continues forever. So, so we need, uh, uh, before this feature, uh, uh, one action we can do is to uh, delete a node. Uh, so the, that's the reason that uh, uh, so on some uh, managed Kubernetes cluster, uh, there is a monitoring system outside of Kubernetes and they would monitor the node status. So if detect uh, fail, they detect, uh, uh, they delete the node and also delete uh, node resource for Kubernetes. Uh, so at that timing, uh, uh, associated resources are uh, deleted uh, completely. So, uh, but uh, we'd like to keep uh, node uh, for investing in uh, uh, failure reason or, uh, or some other purposes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, he's my uh, friend. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. <laughs>